At Corporate Pro Bono and the Pro Bono Institute, we focus our efforts on increasing pro bono participation within the in-house community. We're uh, focused on increasing pro bono culture uh, within the in-house community. And one of the things that we do is help address some of the challenges that in-house counsel face with regard to engaging in pro bono. One of the challenges is that a number of in-house counsel are permitted to work in jurisdictions where they're not locally licensed if they are working for their employer but state rules restrict their ability to engage in other type of legal services, in particular pro bono legal services. Most jurisdictions, in fact 47 jurisdictions, allow lawyers who are not locally licensed in that jurisdiction to work for their employer, but they don't then allow them to also engage in pro bono. And if they do, they put in place a number of restrictions that actually discourage participation in pro bono. So the corporate pro bono, working with the Pro Bono Institute, the Association of Corporate Counsel, and a task force of in-house counsel, have been working in jurisdictions to change this issue. And this is what we call our multi-jurisdictional practice initiative or our right to practice initiative. There are some jurisdictions that do allow non-locally licensed in-house counsel to engage in pro bono, but a number of them have put in place unnecessary restrictions that limit participation in pro bono. And so part of the multi-jurisdictional practice initiative is not just to work in a jurisdiction to have a rule put on the books that allow pro bono, but to do so in a way that allows for broad participation, that allows these in-house counsel to engage in pro bono freely. Um, jurisdictions like Illinois and Virginia have put in place practice rules that support this broad type of participation by in-house counsel. Virginia had a rule on its books that allowed its non-locally licensed in-house counsel or registered in-house counsel to engage in pro bono, but it put in place a number of restrictions that made it practically impossible for those lawyers to engage in pro bono. They included working in association with an approved organization. They included working under the supervision of someone fully licensed in Virginia. It included receiving permission from the court. It included receiving a letter from the executive director of the legal service organization that the in-house lawyer was working with, along with a number of restrictions. And as you can imagine, that was very onerous, and it made it difficult for in-house lawyers to get involved. Corporate pro bono working with PBI, the Association of Corporate Counsel, and the bar in Virginia, and in fact the corporate section of the bar in Virginia, uh, worked to develop a proposed rule that it then submitted to the Supreme Court. And in 2011, the court adopted that rule. So now in Virginia, non-locally licensed in-house counsel can engage in pro bono free from unnecessary restriction. Similarly, Illinois had a rule on its books that also allowed these non-locally licensed in-house counsel to engage in pro bono, but it too had in place a number of restrictions that made it very difficult for these lawyers to get involved. Just this past year, in the summer, the court um, adopted a rule that was proposed by the Access to Justice Commission, working with the bar, working with corporate pro bono, the Association of Corporate Counsel, and in-house counsel that allows non-locally licensed in-house counsel to engage in pro bono free from these unnecessary restrictions. So, as I mentioned, corporate pro bono works with the task force of in-house counsel. And with that task force and other stakeholders, we have been moving from jurisdiction to jurisdiction to address this issue. As you can imagine, New York is a very important jurisdiction for us to be working in because there are a number of companies, a number of very large legal departments, there are a number of very active ACC chapters that are in New York that are interested in engaging in pro bono. And so working with the New York State Bar, the corporate section of the New York State Bar, the task force, corporate pro bono, and ACC work to have a rule drafted and proposed that went before the court. The court then took great interest in this right to practice um, matter and decided that it wanted to investigate more. And Chief Judge Lippman and Associate Judge Graffio formed an advisory committee that included corporate pro bono, PBI, the Association of Corporate Counsel, in-house counsel, and representatives from legal service organizations in New York to look at this issue. The advisory committee worked together, um, proposed a new rule, uh, drafted a report, and submitted that to the court. The court on December 4th made effective a new rule that allows non-locally licensed in-house counsel in New York to engage in pro bono. And similar to the rule that was adopted in Illinois and Virginia, it allows them to engage in pro bono um, without unnecessary restrictions. So it's broad participation. There's one other jurisdiction that also supports broad participation by non-locally licensed in-house counsel, and that's Colorado. There are a few things that are really um, important um, about this rule. One is that 
it recognizes the skill and expertise of in-house counsel and the fact that they too can play a role in addressing the justice gap and so that's very important. The other thing that's important is that it will allow for increased participation by in-house counsel in pro bono. Not just those lawyers who are non-locally licensed, but lawyers in legal departments that are working with their colleagues to provide support to underserved communities. Um, we also are hopeful that this rule will impact what other jurisdictions do with regard to right to practice and multi-jurisdictional practice by in-house counsel that we are hopeful that this will encourage other jurisdictions to take a look at their practice rules and to move in a direction similar to New York, Illinois, Virginia, and Colorado. In-house pro bono, um, for the most part, is relatively new. We've seen an increase in participation, particularly in the last five to ten years. Um, but even though that it's new, the in-house community plays a very influential role in the development and the growth of pro bono, not just in the U.S., but elsewhere. And so we are hopeful that by having in-house counsel be more engaged, that they will be able to influence not just what the legal departments and the in-house lawyers are doing, but what their law firm partners are doing, as well as provide additional support to the legal service communities that are on the ground. The task force has been working, as I mentioned, um, in a number of jurisdictions, and there are rules pending before courts in a handful of jurisdictions. Um, we are also targeting a, a few new jurisdictions for 2014 and are hopeful that in the next few years we'll see some changes um, similar to New York.